In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let's read the Holy Scriptures in this amazing night. We're going to read in the first epistle of Paul, the Apostle, to Timothy. First of Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 5. First of Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the sight of the girls and in the sight of the boys, I ask for your full and undivided attention. I ask for your attention because today who is going to speak is not a man, but it's God through his word. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 that the word of God is living and it's powerful. It's like a double-edged sword that can break the heart. That's why the suggestion would be for your full and undivided attention and to try to understand what God's purpose is. The scriptures say, for there is one God and one mediator. Have you, ever, have you guys ever thought, who is God? What is God? The Bible says that there is one God, a God with a capital G, no lowercase. This God, the Bible shows that, that is living. He lives, he is not dead. But the characteristics of this God is that He is divine, He is perfect, He is holy, He is a just and loving God. Immortal, He cannot die. His ages are forever and ever. And this God, He is holy. But the question is that this God came he showed us his love through Jesus Christ. But the Bible says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men. Who are men? When the Bible talks about men, it's talking about men and women, talking about humanity. And it's, the Bible shows us Romans chapter three and verse 23, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that us humans have been sinning since the beginning. We are sinners and there is no place for us to be. But the Bible shows us that God is a loving God. God loves humanity. John chapter 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves us and he showed us a way to get to him. The Bible says that God is holy. He is holy and nothing unclean can get to God. But the problem is young people and people, the problem is that the Bible shows us that we are sinners and that we need of God. The Bible shows us that we are sinners and that we need of God. But God shows us through his scriptures that there is someone that came into this world to take away our sin and to bring us closer to God. The problem is that if we are in our sin, the Bible shows us Romans chapter one and verse 18, that if we are far from God and in our sin, we are next to God's wrath. And the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 10, that it's a fearful thing to fall under the hands of the living God. But blessed is our God that he shows us a way. He gave us a way to get to him. But let's see through the scriptures that what Jesus Christ had to do. Jesus Christ had to do something for us. The book of Romans. Romans chapter 5, 
Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. In another version, the Bible, sa the Bible says, For there is one God and one mediator for God and men. There is one, but the, the other version says, that can reconcile us, that could bring us closer to God, that can reconcile us through the man, Christ Jesus. The word says, for if we were enemies, this is what I, wanna, I want you to listen. We were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Jesus Christ had to die. He had to die for our sins. He came into this world to take our sins. But the price, the price of our sin was death. We see that through Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through the man, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ came into this world to save us from our sin, but the price, the price that he had to pay, it was death. The Bible shows us that Christ, he was in a place called Gethsemane. In Gethsemane, he was praying. But then there, Judas, and then a multitude of people came to Jesus. He finished praying, and they came to him. And they arrested Jesus, and they took him to, they took him to get interrogated by the council. There the council asked him, are you the Son of God? Are you the Son of the Holy One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God and coming soon in the clouds of heaven. In that, in that moment, one of, one of the soldiers, one of the soldiers lifted up their hand and they struck him. They struck him in the face. It was for you. It was for you, young man. They started to strike. They started to strike Jesus in the face to bring us closer to God. They started to strike him in the face to bring us closer to God. In that moment, Jesus lifted up his voice and said, If I have spoken wrong, you are just to hit me. You are just to strike me. But then he said, if I have spoken truth, if I have spoken no wrong, why do you strike me? Why do you hit me? Then there, after they struck him in the face, they balled up their fist, and then they punched him. They started to punch him in the face. They had no mercy. They had no mercy for the Son of God. Can you understand that we are unholy and God is holy, but, he came, but Jesus Christ, the Son, the Son of the Holy God, He came into this world to take our sin, to take us away from judgment and from condemnation. He came into this world to save us from our sin. But why? They started to strike Him. They started to strike Him in the face. Now just think, it hurts when someone strikes you with no cause. There's a reason why someone strikes you if you have caused them harm. But now just think, the man that was there, he was getting striking in his face, but he had no guilt in him. The Bible says that, he, that Jesus Christ came into this world. He was holy. He did not partake with the sinners. He never did anything wrong. But in that moment, in that moment, they started to strike him. They started to punch him in the face. But then the Bible says, the Bible says that when they, they finished interrogating him, they took him. They took him to be interrogated to Pontius Pilate. And Pilate, there, the governor, he asked him, do you have nothing to say against what they say against you? What is your response, Jesus? What is your response? Don't you see? Don't you see those, those who accuse you? Then Jesus didn't respond. But then, the, then Pilate said, Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to punish him. 
I'm going to punish him. But then I'm going to set him free. Then I'm going to set him free. I'm going to let him go. Because I find no guilt. I find no guilt in him. But you know what the people said? The people said, without mercy, they said, Pilate, Pilate, crucify him, Pilate. We don't want him, Pilate, crucify him. Now just think, young lady, just think. Do you think Jesus Christ deserved? Do you think Jesus Christ deserved this? No, he didn't deserve it, young man. Do you think Jesus Christ deserved to get crucified? No, he didn't deserve it. But it was for love, because it was for your love. It was for your love. It was for you. He loved you. He loved you so much that he said he gave himself freely. You know what they did? The Bible says that they took him to a place called Praetorium. And there, and there they ripped off his garments. They ripped off his, they ripped off his garments. And there you could see his naked back. His naked back was towards the soldiers. Psalms number 22 and verse 12 says, For strong bulls, for strong bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled around me. Now just think. Those people, those people, those Roman soldiers, they weren't small people. They weren't small people, no. They were big people. They were big people, strong, strong soldiers. They were experts at what they were doing. And they got the whip. They got the whip. And they started to whip. They started to whip his head. They started to whip his backs. His backs were being whipped because it was for you. It was for your love. It was for you to not receive judgment, to not receive condemnation, but to be saved, but to be saved. You know what the Bible says? The Bible compares Jesus' backs. Psalms number 129, verse 3, it says, for, pl I, for the plowers have plowed on my back, they made their furrows long. Now just think, have you ever seen a farm? In the farm, there are big lines. There are big lines on the farms. Now that's that's just an image. That's just an image on how Jesus' backs were. That's how his backs. That's how his backs were. It was ripped open. It was ripped open. Those people. Those people had no mercy. They had no mercy. They they whipped his backs with no mercy. His backs were being ripped open. They were being ripped open. Now, after that. They blindfolded him. They put a blindfold over his head. And then they started to strike him. They started to strike him again. They struck him again. But now they said, Jesus, Jesus, tell us who is the man, who is the person who struck you? Tell us, Jesus, who is the man, who is the person who struck you? Now just think, young man, just think. That was your fault. They started to strike him for our sins. For our sins, they started to strike him. Now just think, after that, his face, his face was disfigured. The Bible says, Psalms number 40, 45 and verse 2, you are, the, you are the most fairier between men. In another translation, it says, you are the most handsome. You are the most handsome between all men. You are the most handsome for all men. But now in that occasion, in that occasion, his backs were ripped open. His backs were ripped open. His face was disfigured. His face was disfigured. The Bible says that his eyes, his eyes were almost closed. His eyes were almost shut closed. Maybe his lips were ripped open because those people had no mercy. They had no mercy. But after that, after that, the Bible says that they put a crown of, th they made a crown of thorns. Those thorns were spiky. They had spikes. And in that moment, in that moment, they put it on his head. They didn't put it gently. They didn't put it gently. The Son of God, the Son of God that, that deserves all glory, all praise, 
they didn't put a crown, a crown of gold, a crown of silver, no. They put a crown of thorns. They put a crown of thorns on his head and they got the they got a reed and with that reed they started to strike. They started to strike his head. Those spikes, those thorns started to penetrate. They started to penetrate through his head. Now just think the immense pain, the immense pain that Jesus felt, but it was for you. It was your love. It was for you to save you, to take away the judgment, to take away the sin, the sin that has dragged you, the sin that has dragged you, and you are not happy because that sin is in you. But God says, I am love. I am love. He showed his love through his son. His son, his backs were ripped open. His face was disfigured and his head was crowned with a crown of thorns. And after that, they didn't have mercy. There wasn't a doctor. There wasn't a doctor to help him with his, with his wounds, no. They put a cross. They put a cross on his back. The bags that were being whipped, the bags that were being whipped by you for your sake, those bags carried a cross. Those bags carried a cross. He walked through the streets of Jerusalem into a place called the place of the school. And there, and there he laid pacifically. And there the Bible says, Psalms number 22 and verse 16, for dogs, for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked are upon me. They pierced my hands and my feet. There, they, the soldiers got a nail. They got a nail and they got an object and they put the nail on his hand. And there, they got that object and they started to nail. They started to nail. They started to nail his hands on the cross. The nail trespassed his hand and it was it was nailed on the cross his both hands were nailed his feet his feet that walked on water those feet that that woman those feet that that woman cleaned his feet with those are the same feet that were nailed on the cross those hands that he put that he put to heal the blind those hands that he put on the people to bless them those same hands and those same feet they were nailed on the cross and there they lifted up the cross and there they lifted up the cross there the son of man was he was there he was alone there was two people crucified next to him and there he said father father why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Now just think, young man. The man that was on the cross, he was righteous. He was righteous. There was nothing wrong with him. He was holy, but he came into this world to save us from our sin, to bring us closer to God. He came into this world to save us from our sin and to bring us closer to God. Now the question is, did he deserve to be nailed on the cross? Did he deserve for his backs to be struck upon? Did he deserve for his face to be disfigured? No. Did he deserve the crown of thorns on his head? No. The Bible says that he was despised and rejected by men. He was a man of sorrow. He was a man of sorrow. There Jesus said, he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? The Bible relates that Jesus' heart, Jesus' heart was like wax. The Bible says, I am poured out like waters. My heart is like wax. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me. And all my, bo all my bones are out of joints. In that occasion, Jesus, he was suffering on the cross. He was suffering on the cross. But there, he wasn't just suffering physically but internally his heart was like wax it melted it melted within him the bible says that he was looking for someone to comfort him there was no one 
He said, I, I am looking for someone to comfort me, to someone to tell me it's going to be okay, to someone to tell me you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. In that occasion, Jesus found no one. He was left alone. The Father left him to come into your heart and to change your life. The Father left him in that occasion. He was, he was nailed on the cross. He was crucified for six long hours. For six long hours, Jesus Christ, he was on the cross. And there he said, Jesus Christ on the cross, he said, Father, Father, in your hands I commend my spirit. He was nailed on the cross, he said, it is finished. It is finished. The work of salvation is finished. Young man, people, he was dying on the cross. There after the sixth hour, after the sixth hour, Jesus Christ, he died. The man, the son of man, the son of God, the, the son of God died. He died on the cross. Now just think, after everything he's done, after everything he's done for us, now we could say he loves us. He showed us his love through the cross. But the Bible says, the Bible says that a soldier, a soldier got us fear. When Jesus Christ died, a soldier got us fear. And he, he opened Jesus' side. He opened his side. And in that instant, in that instant, water and blood came out. That, that water is the word of God. But the blood, listen young man, the blood, the blood can clean us. The blood can clean us from our sins. That blood has power, power to clean us from our sins. There's no other man. There's no other way. The Bible says, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, For there is no other way. There is no other way to heaven but through the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father. No one can get to the Father. But if it's not through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died on the cross. Now listen, young man. After he died, Paul said that in vain, in vain it will be if we preach a gospel, if we preach a gospel of a Jesus Christ who is dead and has not resurrected. But Paul said, but glorified be the name of God that we preach a gospel that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The Bible says that he was brought down from the cross. He was brought down from the cross. He was put, he was put in cloths and then he was put on the tomb. And after three days, after three days, he arose from the dead. He arose from the dead. He, he took the keys from who had the keys of death. He arose from the dead and he said, go, go and preach the gospel. Go and preach the gospel and tell them that there is forgiveness, that there is repentance of sins, that I can clean their sins through my blood, the blood that I drawn on the cross. But you know what the beautiful thing is? You know what the beautiful thing is? That after 40 days, after 40 days, Jesus Christ, he ascended to heaven. He ascended to heaven where he is, he is now sitting at the right hand of God in the glory that he's sitting down in heaven with God. But he will come soon. He will come soon to pick up the people, to pick up the people who have believed, to pick up his sons who have believed in Christ, who have believed in Christ. But now let's see what the response of God is. Let's see what God responds. We were far from God due to our sin, but now we were made close. We were brought close through Jesus Christ. First of John, first of John chapter 4, first of John chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son. The Father, the Father has sent the Son as a Savior. The Father has sent the Son as a Savior of the world. Now this is what Jesus, this is what the Bible says. Whoever confesses, whoever confesses that Jesus 
is the Son of God. This is the important part. God abides in Him and He in God. That's the beautiful thing. We were far, we were far from God due to our sinful nature, but through Jesus Christ and the work and the work that He did on the cross, we were brought close to Christ and God says, now God, if we believe in Jesus Christ, God abides, God lives, God lives in our hearts, He lives in us and we in Him. But now the question is, they asked, they, asked, they asked the disciples, what should I do? What should I do to be saved? You know what they said, believe, believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved. The Bible says that if you believe, if you confess, if you confess that Jesus is Lord, if you confess that Jesus is Lord and you believe, and if you believe in your heart, and if you believe in your heart, then you will be saved because with the heart, with the heart you believe, but with the mouth, with the mouth you confess for salvation. Now the question is, who is the man, who is the woman that today, that today will say, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ died, that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe, I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he could come in my heart, that he could come in my heart. Revelation 3.20 says, I am at the door, I am at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens, I will come inside, I will come inside and, and I will dine with him and him with me. Now the question is, young man, young man, all the way in the back, here in the front, in the middle, in the back, who is the man, who is the man that today says, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ died, that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Now in the sight of our sisters, now if there's someone, there's someone that hasn't believed, that hasn't believed in Jesus Christ. Today is the day, today is the day to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I want to accept him in my heart. I want to leave this sinful world and I want to go to Christ. I want to go to heaven. There is no other way to heaven. There is no other way to heaven but through the man Christ Jesus. Now we're going to extend an invitation, invitation in general. Who are the people, who are the people that today say, I believe, I believe, I want to accept him in my heart. I'm ready to leave this world. This world has treated me wrong. I have cried in this world. I have cried in this world. This world is hateful. This world doesn't love me. But Jesus Christ loves you. You know how he loved you. He showed his love on the cross. There, he was all alone to reconcile us with God. Now the question is, who is the person? Who is the woman? Who is the man that today says, I believe? Who believes in Christ? If you believe, if you believe, I'm going to extend an invitation. Get up from your chair. Get up from your chair. And if you want to make your, your, you want to make your confession, your pro, pro, confession of faith publicly, you could get up from your chair, come here and say, I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he died for my sins. But if you're not, if you don't want to do it here publicly in your chair, in your chair, you could bow down your head and say, I believe that he died for my sins. I repent, I repent of my sins. I believe that he died for my sins. Well, people, last invitation, who is the person that today says, I believe, I want to believe in Christ. I believe that he died for my sins. Well, I want to put this in your heart, that in the moment that you believe, in the moment that you want to accept Christ in your heart, never forget in your mind and in your heart that only Jesus Christ, that blood that he drawn on the cross, can clean you from your sins can take away the sin that you have and make you holy and if you're holy you could go to heaven he could clean you from your sins no more condemnation no more judgment but peace peace with God well if you believe whenever you believe never forget in your mind and in your heart that only the blood that Jesus drawn on the cross can cleanse you can clean you from all your sins and may God bless his words in every heart.